An alien invasion is attacking Earth with only one goal in mind, destroying everything in sight, and this poses a significant threat to the future of humanity. However, they are defenseless against disease-carrying bacteria to which humans have long been immune. If you want to stay in the loop and receive more exciting videos, make sure to subscribe, click the notification bell, and don't forget to like the video. Ray Ferrier, employed as a dock crane worker, finishes his shift in Brooklyn and drives back home to Bayonne, New Jersey, where he reunites with his ex-wife, Mary Ann, and their two children, Robbie and Rachel. Ray notices that Mary Ann is pregnant, which leads to a brief discussion about the children sharing a room and Robbie's upcoming homework deadline. Eventually, Mary Ann and her new spouse decide to travel to Boston for the weekend to visit her parents. Ray casually instructs his son to play catch with him in the backyard. During their game, it becomes evident that there is tension between father and son. A small argument arises, resulting in Robbie intentionally letting one of Ray's throws break a basement window. Rachel interjects, suggesting that Ray's aggressive behavior won't help his relationship with Robbie. As Rachel asks about lunch options, Ray coldly responds by suggesting they order food. Feeling exhausted, Ray retreats to his bedroom for some rest. Upon waking up several hours later, Ray discovers Rachel watching cartoons in the living room. She informs him that Robbie has taken off with his cherished Mustang. Enraged, Ray rushes outside in search of Robbie, finding a crowd gathered on the street. People are staring toward the northern direction of the block, where an unusual storm seems to be forming. Ray brings Rachel to the backyard, where the wind intensifies but blows toward the storm. Suddenly, lightning bolts begin striking the ground, dangerously close to Ray's property. Alarmed, he and Rachel hurriedly return to the safety of the house, only to find that all the clocks have stopped, and there is a power outage, and his cell phone is dead. Instructing Rachel to remain indoors, he ventures outside and locates Robbie nearby. Robbie had driven the Mustang downtown but left it behind when it malfunctioned. Ray orders Robbie to look after his sister until his return. Passing by an auto repair shop, Ray encounters Manny, the owner, who informs him about a faulty starter in a minivan. Ray instructs Manny to replace the solenoid. Ray proceeds downtown toward the location where the lightning struck. A crowd has gathered around a large hole in the street. Curiously, Ray touches a piece of the fractured pavement and notices an unusual chill. Suddenly, the ground beneath the hole surges upward, causing panic among the onlookers. A car that fell into the hole is forcefully expelled, followed by the emergence of a colossal machine standing on three elevated legs. The machine surveys the terrified crowd and emits a deafening sound resembling a foghorn. As people scramble in every direction, the machine begins obliterating numerous individuals with searing heat beams, reducing them to ashes instantaneously. Ray flees, seeking refuge inside a department store, inadvertently getting covered in the ash of an unfortunate victim. Taking cover behind a building, he observes the monstrous machine passing by, triggering memories of Robbie and Rachel as he witnesses a man running with his own child. Ray arrives home in a state of shock. Without much conversation, he washes off the ash from his face and hair, informing his children that they need to leave immediately. Ray retrieves a small pistol and discreetly secures it in his belt. They head to Manny's garage and enter the minivan that had been undergoing repairs. Manny initially assumes Ray is joking until Ray's serious tone convinces him to join them. As Ray urges Manny to hurry, the nearby Bayonne Bridge unexpectedly collapses. Ray swiftly drives off, while his kids, particularly Rachel, who struggles with enclosed spaces, grow increasingly anxious. Robbie tries to calm her down as they travel. Ray shares the details of the destructive machine they encountered and his plan to take them to a safe location, possibly their mother and stepfather's house. Upon reaching Mary Ann's residence, they discover it abandoned. They briefly argue about what to eat before Ray leads them down to the basement, where they will spend the night. 
After a restless few hours of sleep, Ray awakens to a commotion outside, which gradually transforms into a thunderous roar. Hastily, the three retreat into the utility room in the basement, locking the door as a wall of flames approaches. When Ray wakes up several hours later, he ventures upstairs to find the majority of the house in ruins. The previous night's commotion was caused by a plane crash in the vicinity. While passing by, Ray notices a man in the wreckage of the plane, clearing out food service carts. Ray learns that he is a cameraman for a news network, accompanied by a female reporter. The reporter informs Ray that all reports about the tripod machine share a common pattern, once the machines start moving, no further reports or news emerge from the affected areas. Ray gathers his family, and they resume their journey in the minivan. After driving for some time, they pull over when Rachel needs to relieve herself. Defiantly, she ventures farther than Ray allows, eventually stopping by a creek. As she gazes at the water, she is horrified to see numerous human bodies floating by. Her terror subsides when Ray suddenly locates her and scolds her for wandering too far. Returning to the truck, they encounter an army convoy passing by. Robbie's anger swells, and he expresses a desire to join the counterattack against the invaders. Ray attempts to reason with him, dismissing the notion of aligning with the army as absurd. Ray lets Robbie take the wheel so he can rest alongside his daughter. They arrive in a small town where evacuated people have gathered. However, the crowd quickly turns hostile toward Ray's family, coveting their vehicle. Ray and Robbie are forcibly pulled out of the truck and subjected to a violent assault by the mob. In the midst of the chaos, Rachel panics. Ray, regaining his composure, brandishes his gun to force the crowd to back off momentarily. However, he is eventually compelled to relinquish his weapon when another man, determined to claim the truck for himself, threatens Ray with his own firearm. Ray is allowed to escort Rachel away from the scene, while the mob turns on the man who took the minivan. The family continues their journey alongside the crowds of evacuees. At a railroad crossing, they witness a blazing train speeding by. Upon reaching a ferry crossing in Athens, New York, they wait with others to cross the river on one of the boats. Ray encounters a familiar woman accompanied by her own daughter. Suddenly, the eerie sound of the alien signal resonates nearby, causing the crowd to surge toward the ferry. However, army guards promptly close the gates, denying Ray, his friend, and their children entry. Determined, they spot a way to bypass the gates and manage to board the boat, but only Ray and his kids make it. Robbie notices several people attempting to climb over the ferry's ramp and rushes to help them. As the boat embarks across the river, another tripod emerges from the water and launches an attack, overturning the ferry and sending cars and people into the water. Ray and his children resurface and swim towards the shore, witnessing the tentacles of the tripod seizing people from the water. In the distance, they observe garments descending from the sky. Continuing on foot, the family encounters a fierce battle between the aliens and the army. Robbie becomes fixated on the unseen battle taking place over a hill. Ignoring the pleas of Ray and Rachel, Robbie approaches the hill and is halted by army personnel. Ray leaves Rachel under a tree and confronts Robbie, emphasizing that he doesn't need to involve himself and that his sister is deeply concerned. Robbie insists on witnessing the battle, and reluctantly, Ray allows him to go, realizing he cannot suppress his son's obsession and must prioritize his daughter's safety. Ray reunites with Rachel just as helicopters make a final futile attempt to defeat the tripods. The last sight Ray catches after Robbie rushes over the hill is a towering tripod amidst a wall of flames. It becomes apparent that the tripods possess an impenetrable protective shield, repelling all attacks. At that moment, Ray and Rachel are beckoned by a nearby homeowner named Aljolvi, who offers them refuge in his basement. However, Ray soon realizes that Aljolvi is mentally unstable and intends to dig an escape tunnel from the basement. As a series of loud noises reverberate from upstairs, the group hides in fear. 
a snake-like probe is deployed into the basement, narrowly missing their detection before retracting a few minutes later. Later on, three inquisitive, three-legged aliens enter the basement. Ray prevents Aljulvi from firing his shotgun at them, understanding that the noise would only attract more. The aliens depart when their horn-like sound resonates. Ray makes a startling discovery that the aliens are spreading a rapid-growing red vine across the land, using the harvested blood of captured humans as fertilizer. This revelation causes Aljulvi to become increasingly agitated, digging frantically and repeatedly muttering about his own blood. Realizing that Aljulvi's behavior will only escalate and endanger them all, Ray attempts to calm him one last time, but fails. Ray decides to take decisive action and, behind a closed door, confronts and kills Aljulvi. After emerging from the room, Ray and Rachel eventually fall asleep. Upon awakening, Rachel finds the alien probe has returned, and they have been discovered. Ray uses an axe to sever the eye of the probe, but Rachel flees the house. Ray rushes out and witnesses her being captured by a tripod. The tripod then turns its attention to Ray, who seeks refuge in a nearby Humvee but is flipped over. Although the tripod loses interest in him, Ray uses a grenade from a belt he finds to grab its attention. He is lifted into an underslung cage filled with other captives. Inside the cage, Ray locates Rachel, who is in a state of deep shock. As Ray contemplates an escape plan, a large valve opens overhead and attempts to suck up one of the captives. The other captives cling to his arm and pull him back. When the cage lands, Ray shows a soldier that he has removed the pins from two grenades. He detonates them inside the tripod, causing the cage to be released and fall onto a nearby tree, freeing everyone. Ray and Rachel eventually reach Boston. As they are guided by more soldiers, Ray notices that the red vines are withering and a tripod has descended nearby. Another tripod sounds its horn, prompting everyone to flee. Ray observes a small group of birds perched on the tripod, indicating that its shield is no longer functioning. He informs a nearby captain of this discovery, leading to the order for javelin missiles to be brought forward. Multiple rockets are fired at the defenseless tripod, causing it to collapse and destroy a building. The evacuees and soldiers approach the fallen tripod, which opens a hatch and spills out a bright orange fluid. A limp alien arm with a pink hue, in contrast to the steel-gray color seen in the basement, emerges. The aliens are dying due to an unknown cause. Ray accompanies Rachel to his in-law's house, where his ex-wife, her new husband, and her parents are present. Rachel rushes to her mother, and Robbie steps out of the house, embracing Ray. The aliens had claimed the lives of billions, but they were defenseless against disease-carrying bacteria to which humans have long been immune.